Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. I think we're going to wait like two more minutes because I see people keep coming on. So we're just going to take two more minutes and see if anyone else wants to join us. Everybody's so quiet and muted. Martin, you're going to have to talk to me at least and say hi. <laughs> Yes. Okay, great. So I guess we could start with the introductions while people slowly join us. Um, so hi, everybody. Welcome to the New York Oracle User Group uh, web, web session. Um, I am very happy to welcome Martin Jarvis, the Product Manager for Oracle Digital Assistant. Um, as you saw, it was supposed to be Joe Hung, but we have to let Joe go on vacation every once in a while. So Martin was very lovely to step in all the way from the UK to assist us, from the UK to New York <laughs> to assist us. I wish uh, I could be there in person. I know, eh? See, that's the picture on there is what I look like if you'd have seen me in person, but you got me in my home working mode, I'm afraid. Christmas in New York is like... <laughs> Very little as beautiful as like a fresh layer of snow on New York. But uh, now that everybody's virtual, I'm sure people are logging in from everywhere. Um, so today we're really going to dive into what are we talking about with EBS 2020? Like what is the roadmap and what does Oracle see as the innovations both within the EBS world as well as within the Oracle development world in general? Um, I find this a really interesting topic because a lot of times you associate Oracle with, you know, technology that was built decades ago and everybody is kind of stagnant in um, where they are with their EBS applications and what they're able to do. Um, this is my favorite comic of the year and I stole it from Joe. <laughs> but basically uh, two years ago, if you would have spoken to anybody uh, with EBS, you know, they all would have been like, you know, there's no need to make any major changes, right? Nothing um, is urgent. Why modernize? Why fix what is broken, etc.? And then boom comes COVID. Um, and it basically threw everything on its head, right? All of a sudden, within a day, uh, people needed to work at home. Systems needed to work uh, offline, people needed to be able to work remotely and be able to log in to their back office locations remotely. So all of a sudden, this kind of nice to have mobility, nice to have chat, nice to have digital for our back office systems became, you know, critical, um, mission critical projects. So it kind of, <laughs> um, the past two years, I think people have been trying to catch up with, you know, how do we provide agility and mobility within these applications? Um, so the main business drivers, like we said, that we're seeing for 2022 um, is really, uh, you know, number one, I think people are still affected by COVID. I think that everybody keeps saying to themselves, oh, you know, COVID is over and then up comes, you know, Delta and then COVID is over and up comes Omicron and you know, I have two people out of my office this week with COVID. So um, I don't think we're at the end of it yet. And I think that the more um, this sets in as a reality, people are going to want more automation, more, you know, remote um, mobile applications, more opportunities to really have computers um, assistance to make basic decisions, to save time, um, and to make workforces more efficient. And I think that that's what me and Martin decided to, to focus on today, on the two technologies that are really driving um, that 
time-saving agility um, and making people more effective in the workplace, which is, you know, digital assistance to really assist um, employees to use chat, text, um, and natural language to communicate with the system, as well as with robotic process automation, which is really being able to set off automated business processes, of tedious and mundane tasks to be able to gain more efficiency in the workplace. Um, I think another big factor is really this whole idea of sustainability, that like we don't need to spend millions of dollars anymore to revamp existing systems, right? People are very hesitant to spend any large amount of money today uh, in this day and age to, to migrate over systems that work perfectly or to redevelop, you know, reinvent the existing wheel. Um, and I think that, that the whole concept of automation, um, especially robotic process automation, is really going to factor in. Um, another big business driver, of course, is security. Um, we've been hearing more and more, you know, breaches. Uh, Amazon was down, other cloud breaches. Um, and we think that more and more e-business suites users are going to be pushed uh, towards the cloud in order to keep uh, secure, uh, to keep their systems uh, going. Um, and a big key factor is also the issue of not having enough IT workers um, coming into the marketplace. So uh, if you work for a company such as ours, we're trying to find <laughs> a QA developer uh, and, and two other developers. And it's like definitely um, a challenge to bring on new developers. But um, we think that this automation and digital assistance and things of that nature will make it much easier um, in the future. Um, to solve that business need as well. So the new concepts basically to help us solve those business drivers. Um, the first one, of course, we talked a little bit about, which is hyper automation, right? It's increasing efficiency, agility by automating um, business processes um, that hopefully will lead to less error, errors in data entry, and be able to use the IT resources in a skilled manner. So for example, we have an, a company that decided to build a DBA chatbot, okay? And basically you send an email to the chatbot saying, you know, uh, the chatbot's name is Shana. <laughs> she has a whole personality. You say, hey, Shana, I forgot my password. Hey, Shana, my user is blocked. Uh, hey, Shana, um, I run a, a large script and it's stuck. And the bot will automatically trigger business processes to cut off, uh, to kill the user, to change the password, uh, or to unlock the user. So it's, it's quite incredible that what this, this company had 60% of the DBA's time doing those three functions. Um, and now they essentially are able to automate those functions and not even have to worry about it. So um, it was a huge benefit to this company to be able to offload those tasks. And they were able to do that with digital assistance. And more and more, hopefully, um, we're gonna be able to do it also with the, with the help of um, machine learning, which is that people will be able to identify patterns, identify um, things that have happened in the past and learn from it to be able to eliminate the need for human involvement. So for instance, they'll be able to see any process that has been stuck for X amount of time um, or a user that's locked and then sends out an email saying, you know, your user is locked. Is this an error? Um, and kind of be more proactive with regard to the end users. Um, other things you might be hearing about recently is virtual reality or augmented reality. Um, people are starting to use this more and more in the warehousing type use cases where people could use goggles and do things like inventory count with their own hands um, while they see the shelves kind of virtually in front of them. Um, distributed enterprises, right? We're moving more, more towards hybrid 
um, hybrid companies where half your employees, half your workforce is at working from home, half could be on the cloud, half could be on premise. Uh, people are going to be spread worldwide, internationally, and how do we resolve, you know, working with these distributed enterprises? Um, and of course, things such as data lakes, decision intelligence, um, using analytics and AI, um, which is a little bit less the topic of today's or, uh, um, webinar, but those are definitely areas um, that the DBA is kind of moving into. With regard to eBusiness Suite, um, I was at the UK Oracle User Group um, in January in UK, um, and they were basically saying that today EBS is focusing on three major areas. Number one, um, UI modernization using the enterprise control centers. So basically um, in EBS, they're providing a type of framework to do a, a dashboard, a managerial dashboard, where the end users are able to have an easy browser-based solution to provide a type of managerial dashboard with a bird's eye view of the organization. So a lot of these control centers are coming delivered out of the box, they're kind of pre-built um, dashboard views, and they could be um, amended uh, within the tool. So they could also be customized views of the data and kind of giving the end user a nice portal-based view of doing it. Um, it's still not mobile, <laughs> so I guess it is because it's browser-based, but, you know, the view um, is more focused for a browser uh, at the end of the day. What I think is going to be a huge thing is basically that they are separating out the EBS infrastructure from the EBS application. So today, anytime you want to update or update a version, install a patch, et cetera, you kind of have this one big white elephant um, and you need to do it all <laughs> in one go, all together. Um, and it's, it actually is um, pretty cumbersome to be able to manage your EBS environments because of this, right? Because of the um, elements that your EBS infrastructure and your EBS application are joined at the hip and they have to remain uh, together with the versions. Because for example, there are people that want to have a 19C database as their EBS application data, but they don't mind having the infrastructure of EBS um, in a lower version. So now Oracle has done a lot of kind of plumbing in the back end and they have in fact separated out. You can now update the EBS infrastructure without needing to update the application. And they're gonna take this one step further by making product families. So you'll be able to have um, your supply chain management, the EBS, you know, 12.2, while your um, order entry is gonna be 12.1 because you're not ready to upgrade it yet. So this will really provide a lot of flexibility um, and a lot more ease of use with regard to how people update and maintain their Oracle eBusiness Suite applications. Um, and then of course, the number one major <laughs> um, benefit today that people are talking about is really um, the move to the cloud. So they don't necessarily mean move to the cloud as we, are, as we know it, right? They're not talking about moving uh, to SaaS-based applications, but they are talking about lifting and shifting to OCI, um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and they're incentivizing this by providing new features um, such as automation for maintenance uh, and patching and better deployments and easier deployments um, and things of that nature. So uh, they really are making a move in these directions to uh, modernize, you know, simplify the maintenance of it and modernize um, the application. Um, so now we're going to get to the fun part. <laughs> we're going to talk about um, what is Oracle doing in the way of development tools to allow us to kind of conquer some of these challenges that we've talked about 
Um, of course, we're going to begin with Oracle's digital assistant, which is the newest kid and the coolest kid on the block, for sure, uh, in the Oracle stack. Um, and we're going to learn how we could talk to eBusiness Suite, both cloud applications as well as on-premise, um, using natural language, um, in order to start getting, like we said, digital <laughs> and digitizing these, these uh, more legacy-based applications. So I just made you co-host, Martin. Thank you. And uh, so feels very slick. And everybody else, if you guys have any questions about anything we're asking, you want any type of tips, tricks, um, you want to have any type of conversation, please feel free to uh, shoot us the questions in the chat, even as we go along. Um, part of the, the reason why I like these kind of smaller intimate sessions is we feel that people join in when they really have some sort of business need or something that they want to learn. Um, so please feel free to take advantage of that. You have a senior Oracle product manager on the line. <laughs> feel free to throw darts at him, right? <laughs> to about any type of uh, innovation questions you have and feel free to pick my brain um, as we go along as well. Okay, thanks, Namia. So, back on the back of what Mia was talking about, um, you know, modern user interfaces for uh, enterprise applications, I thought it was useful to start off with this little quote from Steve Miranda. I don't know if you know, Steve Miranda is our EVP who heads up all of the applications development across all the uh, apps and limited and uh, also the SaaS applications. And what Steve was saying across all our apps, every common question or transaction has lent itself nicely to digital assistance. Within the next year, we will be calling HTML our old UI and every transaction you have will be through a digital assistant. So there's some big kind of bold ambitions around moving and adopting uh, more conversational interfaces, which have a more natural kind of way of using them. Uh, our product for doing that is called Oracle Digital Assistant. Uh, if you listen to any of the analysts, uh, they would describe it as a conversational AI platform. And that's because we use artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, kind of leading edge natural language processing, natural language understanding uh, techniques to create a really natural conversational experience for users to access your applications or backend data, perform transactions. And typically you do it through chat. Um, and that chat could be on your website or on a web page on your intranet or on your website. Um, but it, particularly if it's sort of enterprise, uh, if you're employees, uh, you might want to use some of the enterprise sort of chat facilities like Microsoft Teams or Slack, which would be you know, inside your firewall. Um, or if you're doing stuff outside of your customers, then maybe you might look at social channels like Facebook Messenger or, uh, uh, or WhatsApp uh, or even voice. And we'll, we'll come on to talking about voice later. What I'm showing on the screen at the moment is actually our own digital assistant. And we were getting so many questions from people saying, how do you do this in the product? How do you create that? How does it make this work? So we actually created a digital assistant for digital assistant to answer people's questions. And if you wanted to have a play with this to see what, what's actually possible, uh, there's a link on the, on the screen here. It's bit.ly slash ODA doc. It's actually an assistant for our documentation. So it doesn't replace the documentation. It actually is there to help the user guide through the navigation and find the information they're looking for. So it's kind of cooperative working. So you've heard me talk a lot about uh, digital assistant and you might have also heard people say about chatbots. What's the difference between chatbot and a digital assistant? Well, you know, I think when we started, we were very much talking about creating a platform that created these single task, single purpose, simple chatbots, uh, but we've gone way beyond that now. And what we can do now with digital assistant is everything you could do with chatbots before, plus some more, and I'll show you that as we go through. So when you hear people talk about chatbots, uh, we're still talking about the same sort of idea, the way of using conversational techniques as, you, as a front end for applications, but we've just kind of gone beyond what a simple chatbot can do now, um, multi-purpose, much more proactive, and much more natural use of, of AI and natural language processing. So, the basic building block uh, and what might have been a chatbot in the past is what we now call a skill. Uh, there are four pieces to a skill. One is the, the AI, the natural language processing. And we've kind of hidden all the complexity, all the AI algorithms are kind of underneath. You don't need to be an AI rocket scientist to use any of this stuff. 
Um, this is where you basically train it on how to recognize what people are asking. So if people are asking, you know, what's my pay slip or how much do I get paid this month? Or uh, I don't know, how much leave have I got left? All those sort of questions are all input here. And they, they kind of use the language of the enterprise. So we often will precede these in our pre-built skills, but you want to add the, whatever the terms are that are unique to your organization. Then once you've used the AI to understand what it is the user is trying to achieve, uh, then we'll use the dialogue flow. And um, you know, often if you're saying, right, I want to order a new laptop, you might have to go into, you know, what's the size of screen, what's the spec you want. It's kind of all that backwards and forwards between the assistant and the end user to actually clarify and, and drill into exactly what they need and um, perform. You might actually perform a transaction to actually place that order. And that's where the enterprise data integration piece comes in. You know, we have SDKs that let you call sort of REST or SOAP backends or even uh, to call something like Oracle Integration Cloud. So, you know, if you've got kind of more complex integration requirements, you could use an integration service. And then the last piece is the channel. So we know there are differences in channels. So we could do things like SMS, as I've already mentioned, Slack and Teams, WhatsApp, all these things have got different capabilities. So we want to try and level the playing field and make sure that um, whatever you produce through whatever channel is consistent, um, but also kind of you know looks the best on that channel, makes best use of it, and that's what the channel configuration tools do. And we do all this in a, a you know relatively low code type of environment. That's not to say we are aiming at business users to to build these completely. You know you still need some development expertise for integration and things, and that's why you'd obviously call out to the sort of the RPA tools as well that Lee is talking about. Uh, but um, you know we try to make local tools gives you productivity. That's what we're aiming for here. Be able to build and deploy a conversation experience in a matter of weeks, not months or years. So once you've got your skills, um, you can imagine how you might deploy these in, in your organization. So in any sort of organization, you know, there's a whole suite of backend applications. Uh, E-Business Suite might be your ERP, but your ERP might be JDE, PeopleSoft, might be on the cloud, anything. And any one of these pieces might come from Oracle or non-Oracle, might be custom built, or any sort of things you want to you know, have on the back end. The way in which we create a digital assistant is to take uh, any number of skills, uh, compile them together, assemble them together to form a digital assistant. So what it means is that on day one, you could start off with just perhaps one functional area that you're interested in. You know, maybe it's procurement, for example. Now you have a skill for procurement and then you might add another one for expenses and stuff like that. Put them under a digital assistant. So your, your end users are always talking to the digital assistant, but over time you're adding those skills and making your digital assistant uh, smarter. It means you can start small and you can grow, you can do incremental. Instead of trying to build this great big monolithic chatbot, you're actually adding skills to, to a digital assistant over time. It's much easier to manage, much easier to work with. Um, Oracle are build pre-building these skills for various parts of our applications. And I've got a slide coming up in a moment, which I'll, I'll show you where, which skills we've got available today. Uh, but customers build custom skills, partners are building them. We've even got some open source ones for things like um, small talk and things like that. So it's about pulling together the right skills that you want for your portfolio and uh, putting them under a digital assistant and say making them to available to your, your end users under a channel. There are a lot of features inside Digital Assistant which um, make it really kind of unique for an enterprise type of solution. You know, things like uh, data manufacturing, which lets you crowdsource information from your, uh, from your colleagues. Uh, we've got an analytics and insights that so you can see how this assistant's performing. Treat it like an employee. You know, you want to be able to monitor it and review it and update its performance uh, if it's not performing correctly. So all of these tools are here. It's, this is all built from the ground up inside Oracle. And we, you know, we, we do believe this is kind of state-of-the-art technology for an enterprise uh, conversation like platform experience. I won't drill into all of those, but I am going to show you some of the architecture and uh, how some of these things actually work together. A typical sort of, from an architectural point of view, what you'll see is, um, you know, all the, the front-end channels, uh, web, uh, we have a web SDK, which you can put on your website. Uh, whether it's either an intranet page or an, an external page. You have mobile SDKs if you want to build iOS, Android, or, or JavaScript applications um, like Jet, Jet Mobile. The Messenger applications, Facebook, WhatsApp. Um, and there's also a, a very open sort of de facto standard known as Webhook, uh, which you can implement that and you can plug in. We've got also people doing also things like uh, WeChat in the Middle East or uh, uh, Vibe uh, and uh, 
you know, some of these more esoteric type of uh, chat applications. Or you could even plug in, you know, a third party thing like, like Alexa or Google Home. But we do actually now have voice built into our web and mobile SDKs, which in tests perform better than Alexa does. It's because we've tuned it for enterprise business speak, not for consumers. Um, there's a lot of difference between asking something to perform a business transaction for you than playing your Spotify playlist. You, know, you, need, you, need, you need a, a richer vocabulary, a richer business vocabulary to be able to do that. That's why all your channels come in. So it's all very declarative. Uh, and then it goes into this routing. And the routing part of the digital assistant figures out, based on what you've asked, which skill to route it to. And uh, you know, so if you've asked for your, your, uh, to, to order a new laptop, it goes to the procurement skill. Uh, and then maybe sometime later in it, you might ask for uh, what's my start date of my job. You, know, you might get rooted to a, to a different skill. And each one of those skills so can be integrated to a back end. Um, if you've got simple rest, great. If you haven't, you need something like uh, Always Players RPA tool, then obviously that's a, a better tool for using here. There's some of the pre built skills that we have um, that probably fall into two categories. One is the employee facing. So the biggest area so far has been around HCM, and I'll show you that running in a moment. There are over 90 intents spread across a couple of different skills uh, for the HCM cloud uh, pre-built skills. Um, they cover sort of some of the core HCM transactions around absences and pay, pay slips, that sort of thing, but also approvals and recruiting. And there's also the HR help desk as well. Uh, in ERP, we've got uh, expenses and project management is probably the two big ones. We're running expenses within Oracle. So if we go into Slack, we can talk to the expense assistant, upload our receipts to the expense assistant, and uh, he'll add those to our expenses for us. There's also a lot happening on the on-premise applications, PeopleSoft, Siebel, EBS, JDE. Uh, you know, PeopleSoft has probably done the most, uh, most stuff around uh, pre-built skills. The other side is, is kind of more on the CX side. So there's a lot of stuff happening with customer facing type bots. So in service, uh, with live agent handover, uh, integration with knowledge bases and field service, a lot happening on the customer facing side. And then also in the, the GPUs and um, communications and financial services. So a lot of these pre-built skills are appearing. And so you could put them together. You could build a digital system for your employees, digital assistant for your customers, a few different ones, different set of skills, but all running on that same platform. Uh, so it's a single platform for all those sorts of different use cases. So let me show you very quickly what some of this might look like. Uh, if you are familiar at all with Oracle's Fusions applications, you'll, you'll recognize this page. This is the typical homepage you might log into. Um, Mia, can you just tell me whether you're actually seeing that? Because I'm not seeing a colored band around it. Are you seeing that? I see, I see Lisa Jones. That's perfect, right. I was just worried for a moment that I've been talking to a blank screen for the last No, minutes. no. <laughs> I know these webinars are so hard because you never know people are <laughs> there hearing you asleep. What? So, yeah. Good, good. So We're this is exactly what we, what we see when we log into our uh, HCM here in Oracle is we, we use the same thing. And what we now have is down at the bottom right hand corner is this familiar kind of chat bubble. Um, but we're not chatting to a human, we're actually ch chatting to a digital assistant. And uh, it knows who I am from, I logged into the, the HCM application, it's picked up my identity. So everything it's showing me is in the context of what I'm allowed to see. Uh, and today I'll be Lisa. Uh, so, First thing I'll do is I'll uh, perhaps view my absences. Uh, we, we pop up some buttons, first of all, just so it's, it's kind of a nice thing for a, a new user. You don't know what to type, what to say. You know, we kind of give them a few buttons of these are some of the things that you can actually ask. Uh, but you don't have to just click on the buttons. So we've got all this powerful AI and uh, machine learning and natural language processing. So I could say things like, uh, what are the details? Uh, of my health plan. So it goes away and looks it straight up. And you know, it's come out really quickly with that answer to, I guess, something that I would have normally had to go right through this application, clicking on various menus, trying to find out that piece of information. So it's very fast access to some of that sort of information. Uh, and then you can think, well, who else did I include um, uh, within my health cover?
And so again, it's looking up, okay, I didn't add any dependence, but it's telling me what I can do. So it's giving me the answer and it's kind of giving me some advice as to what to do next. You could do other things like uh, I want to leave feedback. I should also point out that as I'm typing, it's trying to match what I'm typing against some of the kind of frequent questions that people might be asking. So that's where they're coming up as their kind of suggestions to, to speed things up. And I want to leave feedback for uh, Lorena. Lorena Furtado. And there we go, it's popped up Lorena's picture so I can confirm, yep, that is who I want to leave feedback for. Uh, what sort of feedback do I want to leave? Well, Lorena uh, is really helpful and very nice. There we go. And it's asking me who do I want to uh, see this feedback? Well, the managers and Lorena herself I'd like to see. She's asking me to confirm that's what I wanted to say. Lorena was very helpful and very nice. Yes. And that will be posted away to HCM as part of the feedback that will appear in her appraisal later in the year. Uh, another common query you might answer is um, show me my payslip. So it tells me straight away what actually my balance is. Uh, sorry, my balance, but when, how much I actually got paid and when I got paid. And it gives me a link where I can download my payslip. Just downloading here. Now I noticed I was paid 1,925 US dollars. That's more than I was expecting. So why don't I ask, did I get a raise? And it's actually telling me that my annual salary is 70,000. Uh, my last approved adjustment, I got 4.3% increase uh, effective from July 1st. Uh, last thing I'll do is uh, I'll search for jobs because we've also got recruiting built in here as well. Uh, maybe um, I'm looking not just for me, but maybe from a friend of mine who uh, I know has been looking for a job. Let's see if we've got anything available uh, here in New York. What type of job are you looking for? Finance. And great, there's one job available uh, that's being advertised. They're looking for an analyst. And so I can refer a candidate and that would take me through to the, the regular pages within HCM Cloud to actually full out complete that transaction. That's a quick tour of just a few of the many intents that uh, is built into the HCM Cloud. Uh, some of the key features that enables that to happen. Um, what you see is what I've been showing you is kind of this idea of some frequently asked questions. So some of the answers you get are uh, same for everybody. They're kind of built into the bot, very fast answers to common questions. Uh, transactions, as you saw, it was looking at my pay, my annual salary and my pay slip. They're all unique to me and they're kind of based on, um, you know, my identity. We were querying data and we were writing back data when we were giving the, uh, the feedback on Lorena. Uh, you didn't see it in that demo with the agent, agent handover, but if you do have a service desk or an employee help desk or a customer help desk, then we could actually ask or at any point during the conversation, hand it over to a human agent who could deal with the inquiry and then hand it back to the boss at the end of it uh, to continue uh, doing any I guess, extra questions or to get final feedback. Uh, there's uh, another product you may be uh, aware of called Intelligent Advisor, which is a way of creating kind of questionnaires. Um, and to do that from a, a policy or a Word document or Excel document, uh, we can actually surface those through our, our digital assistant as well. So it's a very nice way of reusing those questionnaires you may have built. Uh, and then finally, uh, the idea of making the conversations sort of more proactive. So the digital assistant just doesn't sit there waiting for questions to be asked, but maybe within your business applications, you say, okay, well, this employee hasn't had an appraisal for so long. I'm going to notify the manager and have a conversation with the manager to remind them that they need to book this, this appraisal, maybe ask them why they haven't or who else needs to be involved uh, and kind of rectify that. So that, that's the bot move being much more proactive based on the business event. We have lots of uh, analytics, um, which dashboards that tell you how well the bot's performing in terms of, not I don't mean in terms of response time, but actually mean is it actually answering people's questions, is it actually getting the job done? Um, what are the types of questions people are asking? Um, are they things that we've actually built into the bot or are they things we need to go back and maybe retrain it with? 
Uh, and if we have to do some retraining, here's a, a nice little dashboard that says, okay, when somebody actually asked this question, even though the bot didn't understand it before, it, what they were really asking was, you know, about sending money or tracking spending here. So we can match up new phrases that people might have asked against uh, uh, functionality we've already got. The next big area is voice. Um, we've added voice to the platform because you know, once you've kind of got beyond chat and you start connecting this up to IVRs or to other voice systems and going hands-free, okay well why do, why do we need to build that into the platform uh, when there are things like siri and alexa and google out there well privacy um we're talking about business transactions here i don't know how comfortable you'd feel about asking for your health benefits plan over uh, alexa which is, that's kind of going out somewhere you've got no idea where that information is going but when it's kept within digital assistant then you know that all the gdpr uh, rules and policies are adhered to uh, and all that data sits within your your area of the cloud not not publicly scanned by whoever third party uh, same as you know the whole security aspect is beyond you know stays within your your area if you like and it's not going to be uh, be used for other third party problems or and um, the other thing you can do here is you can actually tailor it with your unique uh, industry speak or your business whatever you call a vacation whatever you call these certain forms you can train it with that and so it's, that's a big difference from say siri or alexa so uh, before I head back to to uh, uh, to Mia, I'll just kind of point to you so a few URLs that I think you might be interested in. So if you go to oracle.com slash DA, that's our homepage for Digital Assistant, you can find a lot more information there on customers who are using this for different use cases. Uh, you can find out how to get started, access to free trials. Uh, that bit.ly slash ODA doc, that's where you'll find RT, that's our Digital Assistant that will help you with the documentation. Uh, there's a loads of technical articles on our blog, which is also available from there. And then again, we have a customer connect forum as well. So if you're getting stuck and you need some help, uh, there'll be somebody from the technical team can help you on our, on our forum. Oh, oh, a couple more slides. Sorry, I thought I was wrapping up. So um, customer story, I had to put this one in. So this is uh, from Honeywell who used digital assistant with a HR use case. So it's actually an on-premise type of extension. Um, uh, I put this one in because they called their bot uh, Jarvis, so obviously it's named after me, obviously. So uh, I thought it was a good example. But uh, it's a great quote from, from their HR director. Uh, we knew we wanted digital assistant to be available where employees spent their time online. Uh, and our vision is to have it become uh, to employees what Jarvis is to Iron Man. So that's where that came from. Uh, great return on investment on that. We've got lots of other customers we could talk about. Uh, they've all created really nice little personas for their bots. Uh, they all have names and an avatar. Uh, um, I think one of them, Holly, is one of the ones we here in the UK. They even had a birthday party for their digital assistant uh, on its first year old. So it's, it's good to see how they kind of associate with these. There's a newsletter as well if you want to know more and sign up from ODA News if you want to subscribe to that. Um, we also have a, a, a video channel where you can find more information. Anyway, Mia, I'll pass back to you because I don't want to use up all your time. Thanks, Martin. So yeah, so as you guys could see, um, it's come such a long way, digital assistant. Um, even the projects we're doing up on it is uh, is quite remarkable. So today you saw um, a demo of um, an RPA that was running on um, an Oracle SaaS cloud-based application, but uh, we've also been doing ones on um, EBS 12. So. We also have the ability of, of um, creating digital systems, even on the on-premise based um, EBS applications, which people were, were asking about prior. Um, on that we do, uh, are you guys seeing my screen? No, not yet. Not. So let's share that. Great. So basically to do the on-premise based um, application, uh, what we first need to do is kind of crack open the black box that is Oracle eBusiness Suite. So how do we do that? We do it with our solution called Aura Player. Basically Aura Player enables companies to create REST services or APIs based on eBusiness Suite forms. 
So they don't have to utilize what Oracle gives out of the box from SOA Suite or to create their own development-based APIs to write tons of lines of code and then QA and then maintain two separate systems. What we're able to do is essentially record somebody working in EES. While they work, it records a macro or the use case that they perform is then turned into a, a REST service with a series of inputs and outputs that could be then plugged in to any next generation user interface. So uh, we support Forms 10, we support uh, any EBS 12 and higher, as well as uh, eBusiness Suite uh, utilities, WAN, um, Oracle projects, uh, the hotel, <laughs> the Oracle clinicals, etc. And basically, what happens is we're able to then uh, use Aura Player to expose eBusiness Suite as a REST service, and that could easily plug in as a back end for the bot to be able to run on top. Um, in addition, Aura Player comes with some prepackaged bots uh, or prepackaged digital assistants in the area of uh, supply chain, um, sub inventory transfer, I expense, uh, time cards, time and labor, um, and things of that nature, where they're really uh, things that you have massive amounts of employees in the field that might want to be able to um, talk directly to their e business suite. So if we looked at the architecture slide that Martin showed previously, essentially we have here the skills that are pre-built uh, by Aura Player. Um, we have these pre-packaged applications, or you could use the Aura Player connector to connect to um, your back-end e-business suite based application. Um, so we have, uh, like we said, um, digital assistance in the area of Payslip. Um, organizations that are looking for an intuitive way for employees to understand how many vacation days they have, how many sick days they have, what was their pay slip, um, right? So they could write, show me my pay slip, and it essentially brings up their pay slip for any given month. Um, and this is a really quick and fast way to be able to provide um, end users, employees with a uh, overall view of their payslip information. And you could ask information such as, you know, what was my income tax amount? What is my total deductions? What was my current hours, et cetera? Um, and this is a HTML based box. In addition, I'll show you right now, we did um, demos as well for um, actually this is a really interesting use case because we have several user interfaces. We have an HTML-based user interface, a Slack-based user interface um, to do a sales box. So here essentially um, is an EBS sales order, but first you're able to determine what would be the, um, what would be the inventory that is available in what warehouse, um, and then once you determine where you could order from, you could actually complete um, the order. So it, it's not only, it's kind of a full end-to-end -end way of looking at um, the sales process. Um, and let's look at that one together now. This is also voice activated. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah. So this is actually requesting information from the EBS on the packet. I'm just gonna pause it here for a second because what's amazing about the whole concept of the chatbot is if you look, there's essentially an error message, right? The AS is not combined as one 
um, as one part number, but because the chatbot understands that after the words, what is the availability of, they're expecting a part number, uh, they know automatically to pull up uh, the second half and they correct it. So they automatically correct. Um, as you see here as well, he's searching for AF. So um, this is part of what we talked about, about machine learning, whereas over time, because of multiple examples, the machine is able to learn and autocorrect uh, certain information from uh, eBusiness Suite application. So when the questions are being asked, basically uh, the REST service of Aura Player is run and it goes to the WebLogic server, runs the EBS session and returns the data to the box. So as you can see here, they're able to ask information from different modules, right? So we talked about uh, the whole concept of skills, where you could have a skill that talks about pricing, a skill that talks about inventory management, um, and a skill for ordering. And those could all be incorporated within the same box um, to be answered uh, with the questions. Now it's ordering the box, and you'll can see that the box prompts the end user in a very. You can see that the bot is prompting the end user in a very user friendly way to fill in the blanks with regards to what is the information they need in order to conduct the order. Next, they ask how many units. Next, they ask what's the customer. Next, they confirm that that's what I want to order. And the order process. So as you can see, basically the chat capabilities allow us to really dive into easy, not needing any type of training. People would be able to access data in a very simple, natural language, user-friendly manner from the EBS backend um, and using Aura Player to really secure the way that we access the data using web services, um, it's a really nice way to be able to create these great new user experiences for the digital world, right? Um, next, we're gonna talk a little bit about automation. So when you find the demo, there is an element of automation, right? When somebody asks a question in chat, it then goes to the EBS backend and performs an automated business process to query the data from EBS and to return it. So already as part of the digital transformation we're talking about, um, there is this element of robotic process automation. And it's really um, this new whole you know, world of RPA has been um, developed in order to reduce the burden of kind of repetitive, simple tasks on employees, um, things like data entry, things like multiple data entry. I can't tell you how many customers we talk to that say, we type things into the database, then we print them out on Excel, then we correct the Excel, then we retype them in. I mean, it's going on and on in this kind of endless loop uh, where if they had any type of automation or mobility, it could be done in minutes. So a bot itself is not really a bot or a machine-based robot. It's a software application that has a set of business rules, parameters, and procedures to carry out in uh, an automated process. 
Um, so essentially for RPA, there are three major types of RPA. One is what we call an attended automation. So that would be very similar to what you saw, where a bot as well as a human agent work together to carry out a task. So the human agent had to give information and input parameters, and then the automation was carried out on the back end based on the information provided by the end user, right? So it really is a kind of joint effort <laughs> where um, a lot of the automation in the back end is done by the bot, but the end user um, has to confirm, right? We had to confirm our order as well as hands it, or as well as type in the parameters, as opposed to an unattended automation, which is basically that something that could be scheduled, right? People have different processes where they do inserts, updates, deletes, things of that nature. Uh, it happens once a day, week, month, whatever it is, and it happens without any human intervention. The script is run um, and something occurs uh, in the back end. And cognitive automation is kind of the wave of the future of this, which basically says that we're going to be able to take unstructured data, right? So it's happening a lot in the medical field where you can kind of put in 5,000 or 50,000 um, x-rays of broken toes. <laughs> um, and by the end of it, uh, with using machine learning, they will be able to automate that, um, you know, if you put in a photo of an x-ray, um, the automation will be able to pop up if a doctor should look at it or not, and what the likelihood is that there is an actual break. So um, it's going to be pretty interesting uh, to see how that whole world kind of um, expands over time. Um, so the top three benefits of RPA, as we discussed, is basically reduce human cost and errors, right? There's tons of these call centers doing tons of data entry, um, things like needing to update price lists, things like needing to do reconciliation of, um, of you know, uh, invoices versus receipts and billing, uh, things like GL. A lot of people have been talking to us about GL open and close um, and being able to process uh, general ledger orders, uh, general ledger lines through uh, automation. So, you know, the use cases are kind of the sky's the limit, um, but in the areas of insurance, HR, sales, finance, you know, we're seeing huge growth in this area. Uh, the main challenge we get is in the area of Oracle automation, because when you start automating Oracle, um, as you know, Oracle is a very complex application, right? And when you create these automations, uh, normally with other automation solutions, um, some of the big ones are UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism. Um, bots tend to fail if UI changes have been made in the form uh, because they are using you know, screen scraping or image capture of the actual canvas itself. Um, bots seem to fail if there's patches or upgrades, which we all know <laughs> happens way too often for EBS. Um, we've heard that bots tend to get stuck if they encounter pop-up windows or error message windows or, or even dynamic components, right? So we know when we connect with different users that have different preferences, sometimes fields appear or disappear, um, and that could also trip up something that's an automation or a bot. Um, also, how these automations tend to run is they automate the desktop of the user. So if you're running an automation, your, your screen is essentially being uh, managed by this bot until you're finished. Um, however, this seems to be an issue because, you know, for EBS type workflows, uh, things take a long time to, to uh, run. So while that's <laughs> in, in process, you're kind of stuck that you can't work. Um, so that's a big issue as well. Um, but basically, these RPA tools that are the top of the line right now, um, they still do not really support these complex um, components such as tab canvases, um, etc. cetera. Um, so basically, what our solution allows you to do is we are an Oracle specialist for, for automation. Um, we work with the back-end components 
Okay, so we work on the web logic server side. Uh, we do not run using the Java applet. So therefore we're robust to things uh, that have changed on the screen and we're not affected by UI changes, by version changes. Uh, we support all error handling and the pop-ups as well. Um, and basically we supply automated templates for common UI, uh, for common tasks in, within eBusiness Suite. So for things like sub-inventory transfer, uh, sales orders, inventory updates, um, cycle counts, we have these uh, pre-built automations that you can simply download and plug in um, and have your automation ready within, within hours. So it's a really nice way of getting a low-hanging fruit to begin your automation process. I see we're kind of running out of time here. Um, did anybody have any other questions? Feel free to pop it in. Um, but I think I'm going to have to owe everybody an RPA demo. Um, you know, have a show of hands for people who have EBS. Um, and I'm going to be happy to, uh, to oblige you guys to do um, a, a live demo for, for anybody in their organization who, uh, who wants to see the RPA running live, the automation running live. Um, we've had a lot of success doing this at several customer sites, um, such as Worthington Steel. Uh, there they used to spend countless hours um, on data entry, on item entry, um, inserting new receipts. And now essentially they do it all using automated processes. So they have an email that is sent from a vendor. That email is automatically identified as the trigger of a bot. The attachment to the email is taken as an input parameter, and then it is automatically uh, inserted into uh, the EBS application, all of the products uh, using uh, the Aura Player REST service automation. So it's actually incredible to see um, how the bot um, is able to read um, and ED emails, uh, extract data from PDFs, um, and they have about 50 um, automations now uh, where they're able to automate um, EAM, um, inventory management, and, and tons of other things in the supply chain area. Um, another exciting use case was done in the call center um, area where um, they have what's called IVR. So what happens a lot of times is in call centers, they ask you for uh, you know, the last four digits of your social security or some other identifier, right? Your, your frequent flyer number or whatever, credit card number, whatever it may be. Um, and then they have a tendency for that to be lost out by the time you get to uh, the agent who asks you the same information again, and you say, well, wait a minute, I just plugged that in. Uh, that is because the automation does not go all the way to the back office form system. Um, so here we were able in this Isricard group to merge nine different call centers, um, including a Visa, a MasterCard, diners, um, where they would be able to type in their credit card. It would automatically go to an agent and the data would be popped up on the screen in an automated fashion from their back office forms application. So we were able to really automate the full end-to-end -end process um, using automation. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I want to especially thank New York Oracle User Group for hosting the session, and especially Coleman, <laughs> our rock and uh, leader who uh, made sure that we had everything uh, ready and kept on following up and for all the social media, et cetera, surrounding it. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts. And of course, of course, of course, my co-host, Martin Jarvis, uh, doing you. incredible things in the Oracle, uh, in the Oracle digital assistant world. Uh, we're, you know, very honored to be one of the gold partners in the area of digitization of EBS. And uh, we look forward to future discussions with any of you on how to bring modernization to your existing applications.
Great. Well, thank you all for coming and feel free to post anything in the chat or to uh, email us directly. Um, and like we said, I owe you all an RPA demo when we get a chance. So don't forget to, uh, to ping us <laughs> to get it. Thanks again. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Mia. Bye. All right. Thank you, Mia. Okay.